Hey guys, welcome to the first video on IR uh, spectroscopy. So I'm going to make this video on IR um, going through like, the theory very quickly and then mainly examples because that's how I think IR is best to learn. And the next video is going to be on mass spec. All right. So this is going to be the last two lectures of your exam two. So let's get into it. So um, the very basic idea is that um, only covalent bonds with a dipole moment absorb infrared light. And that will give us a mass spec reading, okay? So, uh, very quickly, this carbonyl has a dipole moment, right? This O8 is that oxygen is electronegative, so electrons are being pulled towards the oxygen, so it has a dipole moment, right? If we, um, so same with, let's say, carbon with the OH, here, let's make the CH3, right? We get the dipole this way. Well, if we have a, so like, let's say we have something like this, there is a, still a dipole into the direction of the right, but it's much less now. So carbon-carbon bonds have smaller dipoles. So the larger your dipole, the larger your absorption. The smaller the dipole, the smaller the absorption, okay? And so remember that we only, uh, that, IR only shows covalent bonds with the dipole. So on the test, and I'm pretty sure there was a very similar question asked like this before, they will give you some compounds and they'll say which one is not absorbed by infrared radiation. All right. So if they write something like H plus Cl minus, these have an ionic interaction. They're not covalent. So because they have ionic, they won't show up in your mat in your uh, IR. Okay. Always keep that in mind. Um, all right, and so I have a couple of diagrams here. Two of these are questions, the ones at the bottom, and two of these are just, um, uh, we'll talk, so the two things at the top. What I have on the left is a chart showing the uh, what a lot of the peaks look like for various functional groups. Now, some of these heights are not uh, going to be way, the way they look in reality. So uh, primarily, I want to look at the OH right here. It shows a much wider peak than the other kind of stretching you can have, right? But in, um, it's going to be actually lower. The only reason it wasn't drawn lower here is just because it had other things it wanted to show, all right? So the OH is actually pretty unique in that it's broad, all right? And on the right, I have um, some absorptions. Right, for various functional groups. Now on the test, you are given the absorptions. You're not expected to remember it. Now the reason I included this chart, and this was uh, found by Adam and Boss when you're in TAs, um, it's a really good chart because it tells you the specific types of um, how the peaks can look. So you can see some of these have a um, letter associated with them, M, S, or, uh, yeah, S, M, W, or V. So they're associated with strength, so, sorry, strong, medium, weak, variable. So that tells you how strong your absorption is. If you have a strong absorption, you're going to be really low down. Okay. Now, so strong means it's going to be uh, the peaks are going to kind of go like almost all the way to the ground, to the bottom. Variable, obviously, as its name says, it's variable. If it's weak, it's not going to go all the way. It's going to be pretty much near the top of your IR. Okay. And so you're going to use these um, these absorption values to tell where your functional groups are, all right? So the immediate first thing, so we're going to look at this first question right here. So the very first thing you need to do when looking at a IR is just look for the alcohol peak. It's the easiest one to spot. It's going to have, if you look at this graph, it's going to have a stretching of 3550 to 3200. So we have to look in that range. And you can see that it also says it's broad, um, broad and strong. So right here, looking at this, I remember I said the OH is wider than most, right? So it's not going to look like this. It's going to look more like this. So let's see. At, it says 3550 to 3200. This is about 3200, 3550. So you can see that we have this dip right here we that means we have an OH all right so you can eliminate anything that doesn't have an OH all right so now we're down to two choices D and E all right 
So D is only an alcohol, E is a carboxylic acid. So a carboxylic acid also has a carbonyl, all right? So we should look for the carbonyl peak, right? So a carbonyl, where is that? That is going to be right uh, over here. Right? So that has a stretch of 1780 to 1710. So if I find that over here, that's like about in that region. And so the carbonyl peak is, is a strong peak and it's very sharp. So if we had it, it would have looked more actually thinner. So it would have looked like this. Almost goes right to the bottom. Okay. So you, you would have had to have that also to have a carboxylic acid. Where, and you can see that we don't have that peak there. So it can't be E, which means our answer was D. Now, another thing to watch out for is that when we do have a carboxylic acid, the OH peak actually looks slightly different. It kind of ends up looking a little bit um, wider and a, a little bit with a uh, like a tip. So what I mean by that is what we'll do is we'll have something look like this. All right, so this right here was our carbonyl. This is the OH. All right, where the normal OH kind of looks a little bit more like that. All right, but again, the key thing would have been the carbonyl. Right, and regardless, even if you didn't know that the OH kind of looks a little bit weirder, weirder as the carboxylic acid, you would have known that you, all you have to do is check the absorptions. You would have seen, oh, I still have it in that range. It's going to be an OH also. Okay, and you can see here, CO stretching, OH stretching, right? And we have a bunch of other functional groups, um, but again, they're all written on your, um, they're all given to you on your exam cover sheet. Also, there's a, this fingerprint region. This is not going to help you, all right? You don't need to look at anything in that fingerprint region. Now, let's go to this next example. So, again, first thing I would have done, look for the OH peak. OH would have kind of been like right there, and we don't have one. So, anything with, with an OH is instantly, we can cross it out. All right, so now we're left with three choices. So, once you... Eliminate the OH, I'd say the next peak you want to look at is the carbonyl peak. So this is the carbonyl peak. You can see it falls into that range. Our range was um, about for all of these because they're everything here is a carbonyl. It's around 1750, right? 16, it looks like the lowest is 1630 to 1780, right? So that's going to be like here. And we had that very strong peak almost right to the bottom. So carbonyl, definitely. So E is also out, so now we're down to B and F. So here's, that's the great thing about IR. Usually you can always get it down to two, all right? All right, so now what exactly are we having here? The difference between F and B is the presence of an alkyne, all right, this triple bond. So let's look at where a triple bond is. So we see it says right here, alkyneal stretching C triple bond C. All right, so C triple bond C has a um, absorption of 2260 to 2100. 2260 20, 20 um, right here to 2100. We should have, according to this, a broad, um, oh, sorry, no, a variable peak, okay? But you can see we have nothing here, empty, so we don't have a alkyne. F is out. So your answer, sorry, uh, B is out. So F is your answer, okay? Uh, I hope this video helped you guys. If anything didn't make sense, please feel free to email me, talk to a T at the CLC. Uh, I know there's a, there was a bunch of stuff posted on IR Mass Spec by the head TA Gabby. I would definitely check it out. It would, it'll only benefit you guys, right? Use all the resources they give you. Um, and also, like I said before, keep in the back of your head the idea that IR only works with covalent compounds with a dipole moment. So if I gave you that compound, right, um, that's O2. There is no dipole moment there because any of the pole 
in these two directions get canceled out. All right, so IR wouldn't help you in this case. Neither would it help you if you have this, right? Okay, um, I hope this helped you guys out. So again, if this, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. And the next video, we're going to be going over mass spec. All right, see you guys later.